Hello, Wonder Hussy here, camping in the mountains of beautiful Colorado at one of the most spectacular campsites I've ever stayed at. I'm going to do a panorama for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. This really is an amazing campsite. Okay, so there's my rig. I'm kind of parked right off the road, a little closer to the road than I'd like, but road doesn't really go anywhere much at the base of these amazing mountains. Look at this. It's called the Gold King Basin. And well, there's actually two more campsites right down there below me. And I was really hoping that nobody would roll in last night and camp there because I wanted to be alone in this amazing landscape. I think the reason it's called Gold King is you might be able to see through the trees there, there is, looks like there's some old mine tailings. And I'm just getting ready to go up there and check them out. Just loaded everything up into my rig, ready to leave this beautiful campsite. But before I leave, I have to show you, well, there's actually two really interesting things about this campsite. Okay, so the first interesting thing is when I was panning around and showing you how beautiful these mountains were, I stopped before I got all the way over. <laughs> because look at this. <laughs> There's somebody's house right here. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Some lucky rich bastard was able to afford this amazing house way up here in this gorgeous, desolate, remote mountain basin. We're at like 13,000 feet. We're not that far outside the town of Telluride. So for all I know, that might be Ralph Lauren's house. I think Ralph Lauren owns a bunch of land outside Telluride. But look how cool this house is. I'm not gonna go any closer than this because there is a sign right here that says, property boundary, US National Forest Service is on this side. And then I guess this is Ralph Lauren or Robert Redford or whoever it is on this side. But I'll zoom in, beautiful house. I mean, the views have to be absolutely spectacular. Love those big windows and that giant atrium. Unfortunately, I don't think whoever lives there is even home right now. And can you really blame them? I mean, they probably come out here in the winter time to go skiing and stuff like that. Because if you came out here in the summer, well, yeah, it'd be beautiful, but you would also be staring at all these broke, weird hippies camping right next door to you. Uh, and I won't even mention about where I went to the bathroom this morning. Anyway, I kind of tucked myself behind this rock here so that I didn't have to see that house. I mean, even though it is a beautiful house, I don't know, I'm out here in the mountains. I want to at least pretend like I'm in the wilderness and not <laughs> in a neighborhood. But this uh, rock here totally did the job. I had a wonderful evening camping here. It was just absolutely gorgeous. But now I'm getting ready to go check out. Well, it looks like there's some old mining wreckage up there. And as a matter of fact, there happens to be an old uh, mining ghost town up here too. So I'm gonna go check out the old mining wreckage and then I'm gonna go check out the ghost town. Oh wait, before I head off, I forgot I was gonna mention there's one other interesting thing about this campsite and that is that mountain over there is called Wilson Peak. And apparently I just learned this, that is the exact mountain that's on the Coors beer can. Okay, Coors, you all drink Coors beer? You know how there's those mountains and you're not supposed to drink it until the mountains turn blue? Well, apparently that is the exact mountain that's on the Coors can. I'll show you. I don't know, man, I'm not a beer drinker, but I've certainly found my share of Coors cans in the desert. And I guess that looks like the same mountains on the Coors can. Okay, so I'm not a beer drinker. You might be wondering, well, how do I know that's the mountain on the cruise can? Well, because somebody told me that it was, and that somebody is, <gasps> it's Rex. Oh my gosh, you guys might remember Rex from the video I made where he took me flying in his experimental lawn dart, and I almost puked, but I didn't. Well, I just, ran into Rex up here in the middle of the Colorado backcountry. I'm the paparazzi. Yeah, paparazzi, exactly. What are you doing up here? Stuck in the wonder. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no yeah, we found out we're on the same page in the Atlas. That's right. He was traveling around Colorado at the same time I was, and we happened to be, I think you camped only like five miles from here last night, didn't you? Yeah. He, yeah you tried to climb, uh, what happened? You tried to climb Wilson Peak yesterday? Yeah, it was a little gnarlier than I thought it was going to be, and 
these little guys. Oh yeah, who are Mojo. these little guys? Hi, honey. And they don't have any hands. Oh no. And so they couldn't quite make it, but we made it. She, she doesn't. Feet. She doesn't like people. That's Roxy. Where's hey guys. Mojo? Oh, Mojo likes people. Oh, Here. Yeah. Hey, Mojo. Okay. Anyway, they couldn't quite make it. So, so the dogs couldn't just, make it to the top. So just, you got like within a hundred feet of the top. Yeah. And then it was down and too sheer, and the dogs uh, could yeah. get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dogs are limited, but uh, we climbed the Coors Mountain almost. Almost, but not quite enough to earn an actual Yeah, I course. can't check it off the list. That's but okay. Like well, I don't really have a list anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's no point in having a list. But hey, it is wild that we actually met up with it each sure other. It sure is. All right. High five. Good to see you. <laughs> Always good to see you. Bye, Rex. Bye, Wow, far out. Unfortunately, though, Rex uh, just came from that mine up there. He said there's a bunch of people camped up there. So I don't know how much exploring I'm going to want to do, but uh, I feel like it's still worth at least driving up there to check out. Okay, wow. This is wild. I mean, first of all, yeah, you can see there is a big old tailings pile. And it looks like the ruins of an old ore bin or cabin or something way up there. But man, Rex wasn't kidding. There are people camped up here. I wouldn't say there's a ton of people. Apparently he wants to be alone even more than I do. There's like one guy camped over there. And there's this beautiful lake. Look at this lake. I mean, that's like a mirror. It's like glass. It's so beautiful. And then there's a that adventure van camped over there. But that's it. Just two campers. I mean, I am glad that neither one of them decided to camp right next to me, but I wouldn't call this, you know, crowded with a ton of people. Okay, anyway, there's really not much to see here. Um, I'm guessing because this is called Gold King Basin, which by the way, this is a pretty cool overview of the whole basin. Uh, I'm guessing this must have been some kind of gold mine back in the day. And unfortunately, I didn't really do my research <laughs> into this ghost town I'm going to. So I don't know if it was a gold mining ghost town or what was going on up here, but that's my assumption. The ghost town's name is Alta, A-L-T-A, which means upper or high in Spanish. Like Baja, California means lower California. They used to call the state of California Alta, California, which means upper California. So it stands to reason that this town would have been called Alta because we are very high. We're at, you can probably tell by my huffing and puffing. Well, up here, I'm probably at closer to like 13,500. So the ghost town's a little bit farther down, probably more like 13,000 feet, but that's still pretty high. So I can understand why they named it Alta. But unlike, you know, these towns like Goldfield or Leadfield, where it's pretty obvious from the name of the town, what they were mining there, Alta doesn't really give us much clue. So I'm thinking if this mine had anything to do with the town, then it must have been a gold mining town. Maybe there'll be some uh, informational signs or something down there. Because it, unfortunately, it's one of those ghost towns where it's fenced off and it's kind of run by the BLM, I guess. So we won't be able to just go bushwhacking around like I'm used to in my good old Nevada ghost towns. But it should still be worth checking out. So let's go over there and see what we can see. I mean, yeah, it would have been pretty cool to camp up here last night by this beautiful little lake. But I think I liked my weird little campsite next to the empty million dollar house better. Okay, gotta pay attention. This is a pretty rough road. Nothing the old forerunner can't handle though. It's too funny that I ran into Rex and his forerunner up here. I mean, I had a feeling I was gonna run into him because he told me he was gonna be in Colorado at the same time I was, but uh, I was in a completely different part of the state for most of this trip. And well, it finally worked out and I didn't think it was creepy at all. I mean, some of you watching might think, oh God, the guy's stalking you. Whoa, big rock. But uh, no, he was totally cool about it. It was fun. I enjoyed meeting up with him. He's a very nice guy. All right, let's see. Got to focus. There's a lot of obstacles in the road. <laughs> oh, look, here's that house. Oh my God, this house is so amazing. I mean, there's not even like a fence or anything. Like how do they... I guess they just trust people want to mess with it. I mean, if I had a badass house like that, I'd have a gate around it, you know, like a big old wall. That is amazing. And then we're like, where's, oh, I guess the driveway's up here. Yeah, it says no hunting, 
no trespassing, hunting, or fishing. And then it just has this little chain across the driveway, very modest. Can you imagine how those people get up here in the wintertime? I mean, this road is so gnarly even now in the summer. Uh, they must have some kind of crazy, they probably have like a butler in a snowmobile who comes and picks them up down at the highway. And, oh my God, can you imagine? Okay, here we are, the old Alta ghost town. Uh, twinsies, another white forerunner here uh, with Florida license plates. Can you imagine? People come all the way from Florida to come check out this ghost town. And to be honest, I kind of feel like I'm sort of a ghost town snob because I'm, well, I basically come from Nevada, which in my opinion, in my opinion, there's no comparison for the state of Nevada when it comes to hot springs, ghost towns, dispersed camping. I mean, and this has all been driven home uh, for me on this trip as I've been traveling around Colorado. <laughs> Twinsies. <laughs> There's so many forerunners up here. I've noticed that in Colorado. There's a lot of people with forerunners. Well, I guess it's because it's a great vehicle. Uh, anyway, but I have noticed in Colorado that it can be kind of hard to find a private place to camp. And they have some beautiful hot springs, but it's almost impossible to get one of them hot springs to yourself. And then when it comes to ghost towns, well, it's all no trespassing, keep out, private property, blah, blah, blah. Which is simply not the case in Nevada. I mean, Nevada is so undeveloped for most of it. You can literally just sort of bumble around and <laughs> do whatever you want. You know, there wouldn't be a fence like this in Nevada. No, sir. You'd just be able to wander around at your own risk. Anyway, so it looks like there's a little hiking trail we can take that'll take us through that part of the ghost town. But then it also looks like there's just some kind of ruins scattered around. The hillside here which i thought might be kind of interesting to check out first i will say this for colorado ghost towns versus nevada ghost towns uh, it's kind of hard to beat the beauty of this location i mean you don't really see that around them nevada ghost towns i mean today is august 10th and there's wild flowers everywhere which in much of Nevada right now in August, there certainly aren't any wildflowers. It's just baking, blazing hot. So, you know, I guess there are some upsides to these Colorado ghost towns. It looks like these buildings down here are pretty dilapidated. And that stands to reason because if you think about how much snow they get up here every single year, and I don't know what year this town dates from, but I wanna say 1880s-ish. So that's like 150 years almost. 150 winters, 150 blizzards, 150, oh gosh, thunderstorms. You know, they do get some weather out here. Matter of fact, gosh, it almost seems like we're about to get some weather here today. It's chilly. I have to, I got to wear my hoodie, my Up Lake Adventure City. If you remember that uh, jet ski, or excuse me, sea dew trip I went on Lake Powell. Uh, Bob was kind enough to give me uh, one of his hoodies. Anyway, okay, the sign says revegetation in progress, no camping, but it doesn't say you can't just walk out here. So I'm going to go ahead and see what we can see. I mean, it's just the typical old mining wreckage, braided steel cable, old buildings. Oh, golly, like that was somebody's house that's totally collapsed. Oh, my goodness, this place is a mess. Oh, my gosh, but look at that beautiful creek coming down the mountain. I mean, I guess when this was an actual town, it was probably a pretty cool place to live. Ooh, it's nippy up here at 13,000 feet. I might have to make me some hot cocoa. Okay, hold everything. Somehow I accidentally deleted all the rest of the footage I shot at Alta Ghost Town just as I was getting to the part where I go to the ghost town. I don't know how it happened, but in my defense, there really wasn't that much uh, to shoot there anyways. Like I mentioned already, uh, it was one of those ghost towns that's fenced off and marked private property, no trespassing. So you weren't really supposed to go in any of the buildings anyway. And well, whether or not you went in any of the buildings, if you did go in any of the buildings, there wouldn't have been anything interesting to see, let's just say. In fact, the only really interesting thing about that ghost town was actually super interesting. And that was, there was a historical sign on the outside of the mill. There was this big two-story mill building that again, you weren't supposed to go inside. It was fenced off, closed up tighter than a you know what. But there was a sign outside talking about how Alta Ghost Town was actually noteworthy for being the first mining town to use AC electricity. 
to run the mill. Okay, I guess originally they were powering the mill with coal and it was something like a four day journey by mule to drag the coal up the hill. And I can't remember how much money it cost them to do it that way. But this was in the late 1800s. This ghost town ran from, gosh, I think the 1870s to 1948. Okay, well, this was right around the time electricity was invented. So Alta became the very first mining town to use AC electricity, which if you know anything about electricity, I guess DC was sort of pioneered by Thomas Edison and AC was pioneered by Nikola Tesla. Well, guess what? Nikola Tesla actually lived in this ghost town, Alta, California, I mean, uh, Colorado, for at least a short while, I guess, just to see how his electricity would do powering the mill. So I did think that was pretty interesting that this was the first ghost town to use AC electricity and that Nikola Tesla lived there. Uh, I guess by running the mill on electricity, they saved a ton of money and they were probably able to save even more uh, manpower and time. And Oh gosh, well, I really wish I could have included footage of that historical sign for you, but unfortunately, well, I somehow deleted it off my phone. But I hope you enjoyed the first part of the video anyway, and stay tuned for next week when I actually have all the footage I need for a full video.